Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of Zara perfumes for you guys. They have been releasing fragrances left and right. Not going to lie, it's a bit overwhelming. So I, I'm hoping this is helpful. I went through their entire website and blind bought uh, everything that remotely appealed to me. First one is Supreme Vanilla. Definitely more unique than the fragrances we typically see from Zara. It's a very dense, creamy, extremely sweet sugared vanilla, but has a dark undertone. That ink note is interesting and either will be a hit for people, like they're gonna love that unique factor, or it's gonna be an absolute miss. And to my nose, that provides a bit of an animalic quality. It does have a little bit of a dirty feel, almost like a wet cigarette. For me personally, I can't do very sweet, heavy, dense vanillas mixed with a dark undertone, like whether it be something animalic, an ink note, myrrh, etc. because that combination becomes too much and cloying for me personally. It has a mysterious tone to it. It's definitely not a safe blind buy, really it all just winds down to how you perceive that ink note or how it works on your skin. And performance is really good with this one. I got about seven hours with moderate projection. Starlight Vanilla, not a fan of this one. I do pick up on similarities between this and Jo Malone's Myrrh and Tonka, but I much prefer Myrrh and Tonka. It's obviously better blended, more refined, smoother, and just overall feels more balanced. Starlight Vanilla has a definite soapy feel to me, like an intense laundry detergent smell. There's more lavender in Starlight Vanilla and it definitely has like a screechiness to it. And although Myrrh and Tonka isn't that sweet to me, you have more vanilla and Tonka in there to smooth out the edges, make it more cozy, polished. And I get six hours moderate projection with this one. Next up, Vanilla Vibration absolutely my favorite. In the opening, this has a definite black tea vibe to it and smells very unisex. It smells like a London Fog tea latte with cardamom, nothing too creamy or lactonic, Earl Grey tea, and a hint of a dry vanilla. And I also pick up on a bit of a paper-like woody tone. It smells like someone drinking a London Fog tea latte while studying or reading in a bookstore. It's very cozy, inviting, calming, sophisticated. It feels like a fall day. It does have intimate sillage, which is a bummer. You're going to have to overspray. And I got about five hours from this. I adore this profile though. It's beautiful, like a very elevated option. It's aromatic. And because of the notes, I've seen comparisons to Louboutin Luby Rouge. The opening does not smell like Luby Rouge whatsoever, but it totally does two hours in. Then it loses the overall tea vibe and literally smells like Luby Rouge. It's powdery, the vanilla kicks in more, but again, never goes too sweet. It just smells very elegant, pretty, and then smells what I would describe as feminine, where, like I said, opening more unisex. You're getting that powdery, elegant factor from the iris, and then that nice, fresh, spicy cardamom, and it also has like a bit of a woody undertone. Absolutely recommend this. This is beautiful. Memorable Aura. This one's all right. I see it being compared to Fame, Paco Rabanne Fame. I haven't tried it, so I can't give you the comparison, but this is a simple, approachable, likable scent. Only mango and floral notes are listed. Definitely pick up on the mango, and then I get jasmine and some tropical florals as well as a vanilla. I quite like the opening. That's where I get the most of the mango burst, but as it dries down, this absolutely has that identifiable fruity floral designer DNA and becomes lost with so many others on the market in that general category. So it's not for me because it comes across as quite typical. However, if you enjoy these kind of profiles, great option because it literally smells like that. Like it smells like a designer perfume and it's so affordable. No fuss, day-to-day -day wear perfume for spring and summer. And I got about five hours with moderate projection. Red Temptation Summer. This reminded me of several different fragrances, like taking aspects or elements of 
various perfumes, not quite duping anything, but absolutely reminding me of things. One perfume that has similarities, Bond Number no. 9 Greenwich Village, but this has more of a focus on the florals. We have Peony and an addition of Rose, very fresh, pink, dew covered, easy to like. Greenwich Village is sweeter and has more of an overall airy candy like vibe. I get more praline in there and there's vanilla as well. There's also a vibe of Moogler's Angel Nova, but again, not as sweet, more fresh florals. A little bit of Armani Privé Pivon Chuzu, but that is more floral in comparison, not as sweet as this, and that's more clean, shampoo-y. So, if you are looking for an affordable scent in these kind of fragrance families, this is great. This suits such a huge age range. Like I see this appealing to girls, women of any age. It's clean and floral enough to feel elegant, but it has enough of a sweet fruit and praline to make it fun, approachable. It's ultra feminine. I think this is great. Moderate projection, around five hours. Tuesday, totally terrific. This reminds me of Toka Colette, especially in the opening. I definitely get that citrus burst in the opening from the lemon and bergamot. Almost has a bit of a green tea feeling as well with a fresh woody vanilla background. After a couple minutes, that cardamom really comes through. Still the perfume overall smelling very fresh and bright with a powdery iris. I don't pick up on whipped cream per se. I do wish that was more pronounced because I think that would just be fun. It instead just comes across more like a creamy natural vanilla. It doesn't smell gourmand or sugared. Intimate sillage around four hours. So again, it's something you're gonna need to really overspray, but I think is beautiful. Blanc en Soleil smells like a mix of Guerlain's Coconut Fizz and Floral Street's Arizona Bloom. Coconut Fizz is feminine. This is perfectly unisex. Coconut Fizz also has a soft bit of sweetness to it and more of a beachy solar vibe in comparison. This is more musky, cooling, a bit salty, where I kind of pick up on Arizona Bloom vibes. Has that your skin but better feel for summer. It smells natural like coconut water. It's woody. You're getting the freshness from the bergamot. This unfortunately is the worst performing out of the bunch. Like it is quite literally a skin scent. This is not projecting anywhere. Like you're not getting any sort of sillage. It's scenting your skin. Lasts it around four hours, but like I'm telling you, on your skin. I love my woody, clean, musky, a little salty, fresh coconut water kind of perfumes, but it's very soft. Next up is Spell Caramel. This is unisex leaning masculine, too masculine for my taste. By the way, the notes in this line are very confusing because the back of the box has this list of notes. We have orange, ginger, divana, caramel, tobacco, amber, sandalwood. But then the description on the website says blood orange, ginger, cardamom, which this didn't mention, divana, licorice, also didn't mention, vanilla, did not mention, osmanthus, did not mention. I'm like, I don't get it. They both have notes shared and then they're both omitting other notes. <laughs> um, so I will just list all of the notes mentioned on the screen. <laughs> I do pick up on the vanilla and caramel, but this is not a sweet fragrance. It doesn't smell edible. And I do pick up on the licorice. It doesn't translate to me as licorice candy, more like the woody, you know, root form of licorice. I mainly get the ginger, cardamom, and dark blood orange, which brings in a tart quality to the scent. That with a definite ambery feel with the woodiness. Strong projection, will last all day, a classic fall winter scent. This one's okay, like it's, a, it's all right. It's like a general like for a guy. The last one, Tobacco Sublime. Definitely a masculine fragrance. I like this. This smells like it could be a designer fragrance. So it's obviously at a fantastic price point. I think generally, a lot of guys would enjoy this. It isn't what I would describe as unique or an obsession of mine, but it 
absolutely smells nice. It does the job and it smells more expensive than it is. This could be an easy reach signature scent for a guy. It has a fresh green earthiness. There's of course tobacco, amber wood, some iris. The vanilla isn't sweet. Honestly, this is not as warm as you may guess from the notes. I absolutely pick up on the bergamot notes, like a fresh chilled citrus. I think this is a fantastic option for men not wanting to splurge on a fragrance. It's impressively well blended for Zara and I got about six hours moderate projection. So that wraps up my reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.